Yes, hi everybody at YouTube, and I am Michael Buckoff, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-Step System to Pass the TOEFL IBT. Happy New Year 2017 to everybody. And in this particular video, I will be grading some of the independent and integrated speaking practice tests submitted from my online students. And remember that you can also join my online course. So for more information, go to onlinetoeflcourse.com and these are the very first practice tests that I will grade for the new year 2017. So the first one uh, is one of my students. Uh, his name is Khaled and I'm going to go ahead and talk to him right now. Okay, give me a quick second here. Okay, let me open it up one more time. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is after I'm done giving him his comments, I will email them to him. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Khaled and I am Michael, the founder owner and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT and in your situation you completed an independent speaking practice test number 11 right now you also have a question about the 300 speaking topics at my website you will find those by going to the seventh section of my course so if you found the speaking practice test today, you can also find those other topics. Just keep scrolling down on that particular page there and you will see these 300 topics. Okay, so you're answering, your friend doesn't know what to study at the university. What advice would you give him? Because I believe uh, it is most likely for us to be successful in the thing that we like. I would tell my friend to study what he likes. The university will prepare my friend. Okay, let's look at your introduction one more time here. Because I believe uh, it is most likely for us to be successful in the thing that we like, I would tell my friend to study what he likes. The, the problem is it's not very specific, so it, it's hard to really organize all your ideas around that point. But So you're just saying that you would advise him to choose what he likes because he will be able to be successful. First, he will prepare my friend to the profession that he's going to do for the rest of his life. I wouldn't say that he's going to do. I said that he will do. So, going to is a little bit too informal for this kind of speaking. So, I would change that to will do. So, he has to choose a major that he likes so he can proceed his way with passion and enthusiasm. For example... He could do a good, he could be a good engineer only if he loved engineering. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's uh, going to be impossible for him. It will be impossible for him. To succeed in uh, the thing that he doesn't like. So he has to choose a major uh, that he loves. Okay, so let's take a look at the rubrics and let's see how you you scored on this one. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, here we go, right here. Here it is. Okay, so overall I think delivery is very good. You have a very clear, natural sounding pronunciation, including your intonation. Language use, uh, sometimes when you're speaking you can be a little bit too informal. For example, saying gonna, he gonna do that, gonna do that, gonna do this, gonna do that. I would change those to will. Use future tense there. Be a little more formal in how you're uh, uh, answering these things. Topic development. It was you talked about he he should choose something that he likes in order to be successful. So you made that point in the beginning. You illustrated that I think through the body of your response. But you could have been a little more specific. I think in the details that you used. Your score here, I'm going to put you to about 23 to 24 points out of 30 on this particular practice test. All right?
Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Luis, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the seven-step system to pass the TOEFL IBT. Happy New Year 2017 to you. Now, you completed uh, independent speaking practice test number nine. So what time do you prefer to take classes in the morning, afternoon, or evening? All right, so let's listen to your response. Even though many people may choose to take classes in the afternoon or in the night, I consider that in my case it's better to do it in the morning for two main reasons. First, because of... Again, the for two main reasons, that's a predictable kind of contrived template. I would be careful about using that type of introduction for the TOEFL IBT speaking task. Try to be a little more original than that. So go to speaking lesson number two if you want to get some tips and how you can create more sharply focused introductions. My work in ghetto and second because of my kids. First of all, steering in the morning will not interfere with my working hours since afternoon classes finish at 7.30 p.m. and I work in a hospital from 8 p.m. to 8 in the morning. Let's go back to the beginning one more time. Even though many people may choose to take classes in the afternoon or in the night, I consider that in my case it's better to do it in the morning for two main reasons. First, because of my working schedule, and second, because of my kids. First of so all, because of your work and your kids. Steering in the morning will not interfere with my working hours since afternoon classes finish at 7. All right, so you're talking about your first support point. And I work in a hospital from 8 p.m. to 8 in the morning. This hospital is far from the university, so it will be very complicated to commute from one place to another and be on time. Say the word ana, another one place or another. Some of all, taking classes in the morning will offer me the opportunity to take care of my kids. Since my wife works in the afternoon shift and it will be ne nearly impossible to get a babysitter for my children. In a nutshell, because it will not interfere with my work and it will also give me the opportunity to be with my kids. If I had to study, I would do it in the morning. Okay, in a nutshell, so you're using in a nutshell to as a concluding transitional uh, uh, phrase there, and it, it works. I think it works, and it's very natural, and it's what's called idiomatic, which means it's something that we use. Uh, it's pretty common, uh, but obviously it doesn't really mean nut or nutshell, but you're just saying to sum up. So that's a really natural use of that particular phrase there. All right, so let's take a look at your score here. Let's see where we are. I think overall you had a pretty good organization. You had some supporting details in there. So I think overall you created a, a really nice, well-connected uh, uh, group of ideas there. So you didn't really have any major language use issues, and you had pretty clear delivery for the most part. So I'm going to put you at about 24 to 26 points out of 30, 3.1 to 3.3 .3 out of 4. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for KC and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. And you are answering independent speaking practice test number four. If you were to move to another city, which city would you choose? And let's hear how you responded to this particular speaking task. If I have to move to somewhere. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. Just need to double check something. Okay, here we go. If I have to move to somewhere, then I'd like to move to... I would say if I had to move, not if I have. You're using have plus would. That doesn't work very well. So you're using present tense plus the past tense modal of will, would. I wouldn't do that. So you're talking about a present impossible situation. So I think it's better to use past tense. So if I had to move to another city, I would move to. So if you, if you frame it that way, using those simple past verbs, that would frame, I think, the, the most appropriate tone for this kind of speaking. So, which is the capital of the South Korea. 
Uh, this is because it is a very convenient place to live. Uh, for example, the public transportation is uh, very good there. Um, I don't have to buy a car because their subway system is amazing. Um, whenever you go, whenever you want to go somewhere. I would say whenever travelers need to go somewhere or, or whenever I want to go, I can. So I think in that case, don't use that second person singular point of view. Focus on either the first person or the third person singular point of view. That means either the I, the me, my, the he, she, or it. Those two points of view are the most appropriate. Where I just can take the subway and pretty much every place that I can go by taking the subway so that I can save my money a lot because sometimes uh, I have to pay uh, lots of money for having the car. Now when you talk about saving money, that's kind of a separate idea. So first of all, it's more convenient. I think with the subway system, you might say when you move to that next point, say second of all, I also would move to this city because I could save more money because I will have to avoid taking car, my car, and I can focus um, or not have to worry about making those payments. Uh, I think overall, and I, maybe I'm being a little minor on this, but overall I think you did answer the question. Uh, if we look at the rubrics, I think you're speaking fairly clearly. And by the way, uh, if you are from Korea, I believe you are from Korea, you're doing a wonderful job with your speaking. Um, I teach students from Korea every quarter at California State University, San Bernardino, and your speaking and pronunciation of American English is a lot better than the students I teach. So you're doing something right when it comes to your speaking and your pronunciation. Uh, language use, I think overall, the one problem I pointed out in the beginning, you use the have and then the would, I said change it to had and then would, and then frame the rest of your response that way. That would uh, give you, I think, the most appropriate uh, verb tense is to talk about a present impossible situation. Topic development, I think, pretty strong. I like how you focus on the subway system and you develop that over maybe 20, 25 seconds. So that was effective and it helps to develop and explain your ideas. So that was strong in that area. Uh, I'm going to put you at about 23 to 24 points out of 30 on this practice test, 3.0 to 3.1 out of 4. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Ravender K and I am Michael, the founder owner and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. Happy New Year 2017. Interesting. You're doing practice test number 17 on the New Year 2017. All right, so let's hear how you answered this question. I would say the professor discusses. Use the simple present. That's the easiest way to re-explain somebody else's ideas. You don't have to worry about shifting all your verb tense. So that's my first comment. Which are uh, uh, things to be changed in price of flights and services over time. First of all, when the price of goods and services increases, it is known as inflation. I would say the first point the professor brings up in the lecture is inflation. Then define it. Say, in addition, the professor also talks about another concept related to this deflation. Right, so make sure you're putting those voice markers, Ravenu, throughout your integrated response. So you're marking it, 
as a summary. That point of time, the word money loses its value. Two things here. At that point of time. So the P and the T, you need to produce those sounds with more air, right? And that will help you with your intelligibility. Mm -hmm. And hence, more number of units of currency is required to buy the same product. On the other hand, deflation is defined as decrease in the value of product and services. On the other hand, the professor defines deflation as? Uh, at that point, the money increases its buying and purchasing value. And hence, we'll say it increases its buying and purchasing value. You didn't quite pronounce that word. You had a word stress issue there. So, purchasing. Units are required to, to buy the same product. So, to buy the, the same. To buy the same product. And deflation rate, the, uh, the bearers and monetary authority or federal resources. That controls um, the inflation and deflation. Okay, well, when you got to the end, you need to drop your intonation. I wasn't even sure that you were done there, so make sure when you get to the end of your thought group and you get to the end of your response, your tone needs to drop, which tells your audience that you have completed uh, that particular speaking task. Uh, now let's take a look. I think I have some suggestions for you with your delivery, right? So I want to give you some comments right now. And I'm also give you a score here. So, okay, delivery, I think some problems with word stress, some problems with uh, intonation, and problems maybe with the T and the P consonant sounds, as I pointed out. Uh, language use, I think overall, I think didn't notice any major problems there. Topic development, just make sure you're putting more voice markers in there so we know that you are summarizing information from a listening passage so you can refer to it as the list <coughs> as a listening passage or you can refer to it as maybe the speaker in the listening passage that might be something you can do there uh, your score here I think some delivery and then some topic development issues so I'm going to put you at about two point six out of four twenty points out of thirty that's probably why I would put this particular speaking task due to some of the reasons that I discussed. Now let's go to the pronunciation area of my course for just a minute. I have some lessons I want you to take a look at to better address those intelligibility issues, right? So that's part of my job is to figure out what problems you're having and what lessons can you focus on to improve in those areas. Okay, I'm going to go to the pronunciation section. You might want to do that too. So go to step two uh, of my online TOEFL course. Uh, let's take a look at it. So, I said the T. I think the T, uh, uh, speak clearly lesson number 23. That's a good lesson. I think you can focus on. Another one is the P. Speak clearly lesson number 19. Take a look at that lesson to help you with that vowel, that consonant sound. Word stress. Speak clearly lesson number 29 through 32. I want you to review those lessons for word stress. And then you can focus on speak clearly lesson 36 through 40, all of which deal with intonation. So I think if you focus on some of those, in, those pronunciation lessons, you can definitely... Uh, address some of the problems you're having. Alrighty? And Happy New Year! Yeah, hi there. These uh, comments are for Mohammed, and I am Michael, the founder owner and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. So you're doing some pronunciation practice in my online TOEFL course. You're focusing on two specific, what we call palatal consonant sounds, the J and the J, as in major and measure. So those two consonants 
and I will give you some comments on that. So let's hear uh, how you have answered this particular question. I'm not answering. Let's just see how you're doing with your pronunciation. In 1761, John Adams began to think and write and act against the British measures that he believed infringed all colonial liberties. Okay, not bad. The ingenuity of the Polynesian aging population is that they can introduce outsiders to their culture through total immersion. Now, my recommendation here is I would pause after is, not after that, because once you say is, then you're introducing that noun clause, so say it like this. The ingenuity of the Polynesian's aging population is that they can introduce outsiders to their culture through total immersion. So that would be the right, I think, way to pause there. So sometimes, Mohammed, when we're pausing, when we speak, we kind of separate certain structural elements of the sentence from others. In this case, we separate the, um, the subject and the verb from its complement. That would be the right way to pause here. All right, let's keep going. The unusually huge fish coat today does not fit the usual fish coat, which has been reported into the regions. Okay. The beige dressed man engaged... I would say the beige. <laughs> the beige. Beige dressed man... In a particular conversation with the board of regents. Good. The legend is that the general envisioned a vision military which would execute large, measurable commands when the country was on the verge of war. Good. And then say the word country, not country, but country. So I think overall you're, you're pronouncing, I think, those specific consonant sounds correctly. I didn't notice any major problems there. Uh, your tone, I think your tone you can probably work on a little bit more. That would be my main suggestion here. So if you want to practice right now, we can do this. All right, so give me a second here. Let's make, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so I can look at it here. So let's go to view. Okay, here we go. So you ready, Muhammad? So I want you to practice with me. Let's read these together. Now remember, you want to focus on uh, two things, really, your tone and your pausing. You're ready? Number one. In 1761, John Adams began to think and write and act against British measures that he believed infringed on colonial liberties. Two. The ingenuity of the Polynesian's aging population is that they can introduce outsiders to their culture through total immersion. Number three, the unusually huge fish caught today does not fish the usual fish caught which has been recorded onto the ledgers. Number four, remember you have trouble with the word beige, beige, light brown, right, the color light brown. The beige-dressed man engaged in fragile conversation with a board of regents. Number five, the legend is that the general envisioned a vision military which would execute large, measurable commands when the country was on the verge of war. So that's how I would read that. So for you, you want to work on varying your tone a little bit more than what you're doing. Alrighty, so thank you for completing that pronunciation practice.